right? You're not crazy, Virginia. I'm sorry. I just... What if it overwhelms me? My own feelings of dread, of fear, are similar to those of my patients. I should go over their cases. I need to understand what this is. They look at me with pity. I look back at them with hatred. Doc? Doc, are you there? Why would you be there? It's the middle of the goddamn night. This is bad, man. I, I don't even know what's happening. I, I gotta warn them, Doc. They don't know about the monsters. In an unexpected turn of events, it seems I am the one who is losing my mind. Hello, I am Modus Community Manager Luke, aka Hoagie, and the uh, trailer that you just watched is for In Sound Mind, which is an upcoming psychological horror game that's releasing later this year. I'm super excited about it. I'm also super excited about this stream because I am being joined by the lead writer from uh, the In Sound Mind team. We create stuff. Yair, Yair, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. Hi there. Thank you for having me. This is indeed exciting. And uh, so just to give a little rundown of what we're going to be doing today, uh, we're going to be playing through the In Sound Mind demo, which is right now available on Steam. You can go check it out for free, play through uh, the first tape of the game. We're not going to play through the entire demo here on stream because we definitely want to give you guys something to uh, to go and play for yourselves as well. But as we play, we're going to be talking about the game, answering fan questions uh, over here on Twitch. So if you're watching live and you have a question about the game, uh, we'll try to answer it. I'll caveat it because we definitely don't want to give away any spoilers. Uh, there's still a lot of the game that is yet to be shown. And uh, so before we hop into it, though, uh, for people who don't know what In Sound Mind is, can you give them kind of a, a little bit of a rundown of what the game is about and what they can expect when they uh, hop into the demo? Sure. So kind of broadly speaking, uh, In Sound Mind is a psychological horror game that focuses on having a fun experience uh, as a game that's like first and foremost what's super important for us is to tell a good story and have the game be fun and by fun i mean not just like you know that that rush that you get from a jump scare fun as in the the gratification of progress and of puzzle solving and of defeating an enemy that's been you know bothering you for a while the the uh sort of um how can i say this uh uh uh, rewarding the player with accomplishment and progress uh, is a huge um, focus uh, of ours. And, um, and so we, we thought, how can we, how can we, we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel when it comes to horror games, but we want to give um, the audience a new take on something that existed. Uh, and so we all looked at the uh, action and horror games that we all grew up with and and loved. Uh, uh, most of the team uh, are, uh, you know, 90s kids. Uh, and we brainstormed and took all the tropes that we loved, took out the ones that we hated and sort of came up with this amazing, big, you know, lore heavy game in sound mind which deals on so many levels and, and and different aspects and stories and it's personal and gut-wrenching and fun and action-packed it's uh, it's it's the coolest project i've ever worked on man well it's awesome to hear your excitement i know uh you know i'm i'm a little picky when it comes to horror to be to be honest because i think there's a lot of like cheap tricks in horror that get leaned on sure. pretty heavily and uh so you know when we said, "Hey, we signed this game. It's in Sound Mind. It's this horror game." I'm always a little, little hesitant because I'm, I'm so picky about it, right? Uh, but playing this demo, I think it's you see how uh, careful you guys are to like not lean too heavily on uh, a lot of the kind of a lot of a lot of newer horror games, right? It's like a lot of run and hide, a lot of stealth gameplay. 
This game, you feel like you have a lot more agency in it. And like you said, it's all about the puzzles and the exploration. And that's something that I really appreciate about it. Sure. I think that it's uh, we have a healthy balance of all all aspects. I mean, there's a balance of action. There's a balance of... of um, uh, Oh, what was the word you used? Uh, stealth. Um, there's a balance in puzzle solving, and 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 the, one of the most important things for us was to not create a walking simulator. Mm -hmm. You you're engaged at all times of the game, whether it is in obvious or subtle ways. You're you're if you're not engaged in combat, you're engaged in music. Uh, in in you know in in reading environment in environmental storytelling or in reading actual notes You're, there's always something to think about always something going on always something that you can turn your attention to and with music it's been you know a no brainer so easy having you know living tombstone on our side means we you know we we don't have to put lots of thought into it it's it's there yeah can you talk a little bit about how that partnership came came to be you know the living tombstone is very popular in gaming circles and uh so how did how did you guys connect with him to be a part of this project oh well um actually uh yoav who is the uh, living tombstone he's the embodiment of living tombstone uh he's uh he was part of uh we create stuff before i was i mean he's he's oh, okay. he's part of the company he's one of the uh, founding fathers um, I think that, uh, I think that's the, the, the collaboration with him, the, uh, uh, knowing that music is going to be a big part of the game was something that was always intended on it. It was one of the cornerstones on which this was built. Um, I mean, in, in all aspects, gameplay, story, and also, I mean, look at the title itself. Sound is a huge part of our game. So much of the game has to do with uh, musical and audio ambience. We have songs. There's an album. There's there's so much of it that Tombstone is involved with. Yeah. So uh, we're right now into the, like the opening parts of the demo, and uh, so tell us a little bit about where we're starting here and kind of how this uh, this building kind of serves the rest of the game. So. Um, when you started the game up, we, uh, we heard an ominous voice, uh, tell us that, uh, uh, they say that curiosity kills the cat. Uh, I killed the cat. Uh, curiosity only brought her to me. And then the camera pulls back and we're seeing this flooded town and camera goes through the, uh, a basement window and, uh, and gives the control to our, to our player. And, um, this basement, uh, it'll be revealed uh, very soon as part of a uh, much larger building, um, what we're going to call our, our, our hub. And uh, it is an ever-changing and uh, sort of an expanding uh, little um, uh, residential building uh i'm trying to i'm trying to uh, not give anything away so i'm thinking <laughs> as i'm talking um uh we will uh a majority not a majority I, i'd say uh, not, not at all actually um but this is where you're going to end up between levels this mm -hmm. is your hub uh, you'll always be coming back here to something that is a little different um to different characters different things left behind uh you have uh, now the tools that you gained in a level to maybe access a different place you didn't before there's a lot of exploration there's a lot of storytelling in the hub um what the hub is that's uh for the player to figure out all right a little little mystery can't can't have a good horror game without some mystery so um well i keep pressing a instead of x so yeah we're we're in our hub world we're kind of exploring this is somewhat of the tutorial of the game right teaching you teaching you the controls how to how to use your inventory and stuff um but we're solving puzzles all along the way and i that's something that i really appreciate about this game so uh before i worked at modus i actually ran an escape room and uh was mm -hmm. like the creative director for it and so uh i designed all of the you know 
puzzles that were in the rooms. And one of the things I really like about In Sound Mind is how items in the game serve multiple purposes right so mm -hmm. uh you may find something in the beginning of the game or, and even in the beginning of this demo that does one thing but then as you continue through the game the purpose of that thing evolves and it's like uh it's it's almost like an economical approach right to to your inventory to your itemization and uh it's really thoughtful well we we initially wanted to make a macgyver game and when we couldn't get the rights, uh, we tried to make a MacGruber game. And when SNL sued us, we made In Sound Mind instead. Um, uh, it's just, we just, we love the idea of using items for different reasons. Um, I think that a lot of times you, you, when you're playing a video game and there's something in your way and you ask, well, this is stupid. If this was really happening to me, I'd just do this, you know? Why, why can't you just jump over that, right? And um, and so much of the thought process that we have has to do with, uh, is this video game logic? Like, can we get away with this? Or can we somehow find an answer to this question? Mm -hmm. um, and by figuring out multiple uses for items, uh, we, we actually kind of like figured out that we could make this game so much more interesting and we can come up with new puzzles. Um, there's still some video game logic in it, you know, some suspension of disbelief, uh, which I believe you, you sign up for when you play anything. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, finding multiple purposes for items, um, you know, it, it just gives us, uh, it gives us a, a, a wider pool to swim in, you know? Yeah, Definitely. Uh, so we got we have a couple questions in the chat. Ghost Attack wants to know uh, what is the month to month estimate for when the full game is coming out, and are there plans for future DLCs when uh, the game releases? So uh, you know, 2021 is what we have announced. You know, we have timelines in mind uh, for when that is, but right now, uh, you know, just expect to be playing the full game sometime this year. And then as far as uh, DLCs, I think right now the focus is really just on creating a. Uh, a solid base experience with uh you know the chapters and tapes that you're going to be be playing through now i don't know if there are any plans uh for additional content at the time yeah i don't know either it's a good question that <laughs> remains to be seen um and then uh justin's gaming corner uh says will the ps5 version take advantage of the uh of the console and haptic feedback in the controller um I've not played the game yet on uh, on the PS5 to know that, and uh, I don't know, Yair, if you've got insight into any of the actual development on the PS5 side of things. You know, I, I write story, not code. So. Like, that's so not my department. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea. Um, it's a great question. Uh, I just, I, I wish I could answer it. Yeah. Um, uh, I know that we have uh, amazing people on the job, uh, talking about like you know PS5 optimization, um, so I don't know. However, I will say this: because I don't know the answer to that question, I'm going to forward it to our programmers. There we go. And then you know, even if we don't know the answer to a question, because where where you write stories, I just write tweets, right? Like that's my job. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. you can join our Discord exclamation point Discord in the chat. Uh, the the We Create Stuff team is awesome uh, at responding to questions in uh, the In Sound Mind channel on our Discord. So uh, so definitely join there. All right. So we've found desmond's office uh as part of this building and uh so we also found a tape that's listed as is desmond's tape and so uh can you talk to us a little bit about the the tapes and kind of the mechanics of of the hub world sure sure so like i said you know uh most of our team were all you know 90s kids and when we were growing up cassette tapes were still very much a thing um, you know, we listen to, to music through these cassette tapes and, um, and while we were trying to, you know, figure out like what would be, what would set us apart from other horror games, like what kind of cool mechanics, um, 
we could use. Um, and we came out with uh, with the tape. And the tape serves uh, uh, multiple purposes in our story. Sort of like um, it's uh, it, it 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 serves as a gateway for us into our patients' uh, s- s- stories, if you will, into other people's minds, into other people's heads. Um, if you think about what a what a tape is, it's uh, it's it's really no different than uh, uh, putting a pen to paper. It's recorded information. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 storage, if you will, um, just like our brains are. Uh, and so that's that's what it is on a metaphorical level, sort of. We we use tapes as a means of accessing other people's stories, stored information. Um, and it's trippy. I mean, look, you are you're inside one right now. Yeah. So as you saw, put the tape in, the world starts to change. We press play, and we're in our door out of our office becomes a portal into uh, into another world. So, uh, so that's kind of the the way the the hub world works. There's also just something inherently creepy about analog media, right? Like, there's something a lot creepier about a cassette tape or like a videotape than a uh, a CD or a DVD or like an MP3 player. Well, I think because it's you know it's more primitive mm-hmm. in a sense. That's that's maybe where your your fear comes from. I mean, give a cassette tape to somebody who's uh, you know born in the 2000s and they might not know what to what to do with it. And it's also, I mean, look at this thing. Look at that thing in the background over there. It's this giant thing with teeth in the middle of its wheels, and if you you know, who understands this old stuff? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's a cool opportunity to talk to you as the lead writer of the game, uh, because I think writing in horror is a very complicated task. Like writing in anything is complicated, but with, within horror, it's just really easy for the story to kind of get away from you. Right. Um, and so what's like your your approach when creating the stories for each of these individual patients that we're going to encounter, but also Mm -hmm. like tying them all together uh, with the story of Desmond. Well, without giving too much away, um, Desmond is in a unique uh, position uh, to listen to uh, these, these people's stories. Uh, you might say that it's his his job to listen. People come to him, and uh, and so that was it. Kind of made it really easy for me. You know, it, it came together very easily because if if my job is just to sit there and people come to me with their problems, then uh, I don't really have to construct this insane narrative for why I'm hearing all this information. It's there. Uh, the question was to how how to make it. Uh, interesting and and where is the horror in all of that Mm -hmm. um and so you know we have uh we have your a lines and your b lines of the story and your c lines of the story and it all comes together um in a very very interesting through line um but when writing uh these characters the the most important part of it for me was to make it personal uh and relatable is a better word um i didn't want to sit and talk about problems that you know nobody will understand uh i wanted i wanted the uh, the common player to be able to listen to someone's therapy session and go i i get it i get it i'm going through the same thing and if not you, then you at least know somebody else that did. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it creates a, a connection not only between you and the main character, but between you and every other character in the game. Um, you know, there are stories where you root for the protagonist. There are stories where you root for the antagonist. And in my story, you, you want to root for everyone involved including that one right over there. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is the, the highlight of the demo right here. So sorry to give away the best parts, but uh, Tanya, of course, you can pet the cat. And uh, I just love how our introduction to Tanya is her doing the exact thing that cats are known for, which is knocking shit off of tables, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're uh, we're big cat people, the whole, the whole team. Animal people in general, but, I mean, big cat people. And... Um, we were, uh, there's, let's just put it this way. This is, uh, it's only, what you're seeing right now is, is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Tanya. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we, there's more to be discovered about Tanya in the demo that we're definitely not going to get to. So if you haven't yet, uh, you can download the demo right now on Steam Excavation Point demo in the chat. We'll give you uh, a link to the Steam page so that you can be able to play it and uncover all of these mysteries. Um, so, yeah, we've gone through Desmond's tape. Uh, we've teleported back into our office. We've met Tanya. And if you didn't notice, when we first got into the elevator, it was missing a button to one of the floors. And Tanya so graciously gifted us that missing button now. So opening up more of the... Uh, of this hub world for us to explore. Absolutely. Yes, she, uh, Tanya is a integral part to our story. Um, also, you know, we, we wanted to give, uh, we wanted to give the players a chance to get away from the chaos and, you know, maybe spend a minute petting a cat because <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what gives you the motivation to go into the next chapter. Or just gives you that moment of respite, right? Like Yeah, exactly. Uh, to catch your breath. Yeah. Makes you feel good inside. I can sneak past it. I know I can. Absolutely. So this is always uh the most entertaining part of the stream for me is seeing if I can get by here without getting it getting caught. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty pretty proud of myself for not having just walked off the path in Desmond's uh world because I do that pretty regularly. But so we're uh Oh, you mean in the transition area? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th that's kind of uh, our first introduction to the first enemy, right there, right with uh, with the ink blot. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the the design and how like you guys approached uh, who the the monsters that you encounter in the game are? Sure, uh, I, I'm going to try and do this my best without giving anything away. Um, Ink blots are definitely one of the characters that you will encounter throughout the game. Um, the the decision to go with an ink blot uh, is one that just ties into sort of you know the 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 world of um, of uh, psychological therapy, you know, and um, uh, we wanted to uh, tie it in with uh, you, the the mysterious voice that just talked to you on the phone before the ink blot appeared asked you if you know how a Rorschach test works, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that the idea behind an ink blot is that it can be whatever you want it to be. It can it it, it is whatever it means to you. It's up to interpretation, and if you see it as an enemy, then it is so. Um, and, uh, to sort of, um, string that back to other enemies, a, a lot of the design and thought that went into who are the other enemies in the game and, and why they look the way they look, why they act, what, what's their purpose is, is all around the thought of, you know what what you see how you it's interpretation it's uh it's uh whether be it be it self interpretation or or outside societal interpretation of you know issues ailments and issues um so so as i guess that's a long way of saying there's a lot of thoughts <laughs> going into uh you know character design at least at least on a you know from a writing standpoint i mean where where you know where i'm coming from then you have you know conceptual artistic design um and uh you know th animation and stuff like that which we have like an amazing team of people from all over the world that are b beyond talented 
uh, that could make these things come to life. Which is, as a writer, dude, it's the coolest thing in the world to like write a character down and then have a team of other people bring it to life. It's insanity. It's insane to see that happening. Yeah, uh, like when I wrote an ink blot as an enemy, I never, I never imagined in a million years that within you know, few months time, I I would not only have it be so, but it would also be played by people around the world online. It's insane to me. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, well... I'm having a lot of fun just listening to you. It's it's clear you love this project. You're really passionate about this project. But I think the other thing that's really cool to hear is that there's so much intentionality behind it. You know, uh, I think it's really easy in horror to kind of lean on the tropes of horror. And uh, mm-hmm. I think when people kind of hear the, the, the high level concept of in sound mind, right, you're playing as this. Uh, psychiatrist who's kind of exploring his uh, the 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 patients he's worked with in the past. I think uh, it's really easy to kind of settle into the tropes around uh, you know uh, psychiatry and stuff like that the, as it's represented in in horror. But I think just from hearing you talk about your approach to these characters and your approach to the writing, that you didn't want to just lean on how horror approaches those topics. Uh, generally right yes yes um look in in the world of therapy um every issue is not a monolith meaning it's every issue that a person can have um for which he or she would um search for help um, because of it is a spectrum. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, you know, no two people suffering from the same ailment, their, their stories won't be exactly the same. Um, and a lot, of, when we were thinking about all the games that inspired us, um, over the years, so many of them dealt with, uh, uh mental health issues and, Um, thankfully, uh, thanks to the time that we live in now, there's a lot of uh, awareness to that now. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are channels on YouTube, uh, fantastic channels, um, and and many an article uh, written about the use of um, mental illnesses in in, uh, pop culture. Um, And we wanted to be... uh, And at first it scared us. And we said, you know what, maybe maybe we don't want to touch upon these subjects at all. And maybe we should, uh, uh, you know, write a game uh, that's, uh, you know, sort of a, a, a detective murder mystery instead. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is too big for us. Um, and, and, and then we started thinking, well, you know, it, it's all about respect. If you have respect for the... Um, for, for what you're writing, for the subject and the subject matter, and, and, and the, you have respect for the character, uh, the characters and their struggles. And if you can relate, then, uh, then there's no reason not to talk about things. That's, that, that's what awareness is. Awareness is talking about things. Um, and so we found a way. We, we, we found a way to relate to other people's ailments and issues we found a way to make it interesting we 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 found a way to be respectful um and uh and and original at the same time you know uh it's hard it's hard especially in this day and age where you know it's it's really hard to come up with new stuff everything's been done mm-hmm. um and uh and i think we did a a, a damn fine job uh, and I'm really excited for when this comes out to to see the feedback that we get from from everyone. I mean, not you know players, but also I, I want to hear the stories of people going. You know, I I related to this character to that character on on a level that I I've never experienced before. You know, playing a video game. Yeah. And um. And and 
it's and, and the toughest part is to say okay we're going to do something that you know might touch on a sensitive subject but it's also going to be super fun uh and we did that too you know so did we reinvent the wheel no did we take a wheel and put spikes on it and make it into a james bond type vehicle wheel with gadgets and look at all this stuff this wheel can do oh yeah yeah uh so just to kind of catch uh the viewers up on what i've been doing a as we play it it's hard to not just like go into autopilot after you play these puzzle games right like uh because you start because you know where the things are so we found a piece of paper in uh on one of the floors that gave us instructions on where pieces of a gun had been hidden and so we found all of those parts we now have come down and we've assembled uh those parts into a gun and so uh i think one of the things that Ito has talked about in in the past when I've talked to him is how uh, he wanted to give the players options with how to approach the game, right? Like, uh, you're given this gun, and so there is a, a combat uh, approach to the game that's uh, not necessarily required for, for everything, but uh, if that's your style of gameplay, if that's something that you uh, like having, that is an option that's, that's given to you. So uh, with, like, the mm -hmm. inkblot enemies... Uh, you know, you can attack them with the gun, or you can choose to try to uh, try to sneak around them. Sure, sure. I mean, look, if you've got things coming to get you, having a gun will definitely make things easier. Provides a, a uh, little bit of safety there, right? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, you know, then again, uh, guns make a lot of noise, and uh, things have ears that's right so uh not always the most advantageous thing to to use your gun in every situation but right so so let's uh i want to jump into uh, some some viewer questions here before we uh get into the into virginia's tape because i do want to show a little bit uh, of that before we we wrap things up uh let's see uh Kalium in the chat says, can we all take a moment to thank the devs for a horror game about psychology that does not take place in an asylum, which feels like the go-to these days. Um, mm -hmm. You want to speak a little bit to that about how you guys chose the, oh. Well, that, so that was, that's just it. I mean, you know, I, I, there have been more than enough games that, that center around the same tropes. Um, uh, and and an asylum is a, is it's a good one. I mean, yeah, asylums can be super scary. Uh, of course they can be, except they can also be super helpful for people. And people who go to asylums n need those asylums. And and that's the part that we don't see portrayed. Um, and we we you know taking the story out of an asylum and putting it in a more common space uh, um, uh, setting um, was very intentional. It's it's to show you that uh, you know people people need help and and it's everyone everyday people people you see out on the street you do everybody everybody needs a little help everybody needs somebody to talk to taking it out of the asylum makes it a lot more commonplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. Sprayable Spaghetti, <laughs> great username, by the way. Once Amazing. Know, uh, with the amount uh, the game is based on psychology, has there been a psychiatrist on the team to get their opinion on how uh, things are being done or set in the game? Have you guys consulted with professionals in that area? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, not oh, we, we, we have consultants uh, on board, and there's a lot of research. There's a lot of research that went into this um to um on top of that i i will say this the our, our the focus of the game is not about mental illness the focus of the game is about the stories of these characters mm -hmm. and so you know we didn't this is very intentional we didn't want to make people's problems their mental Ill issues there are like i said like mental illness is a spectrum that most people in the world are on mm -hmm. everybody experiences a mental issue at one point or another in their lives and so much of it is 
the circumstances around you at the time and how you deal with it and where you were in life and who you were surrounded with. Plus, like I said, you know, there's an A line to the story. There's a there's a B line. There's a C line. There's a lot going on here that contributes um, to the, the the story is not as simple as it seems on the surface. Um, so yes, to answer your question, yes, there's a lot of there was there's there's research and forethought going into into all of it and consultation. Yeah, which is you know, awesome to hear because like you said, this is about like, even though that isn't the, the focus of the game, right. It, with it being an mm -hmm. aspect, you, you want to make sure you're approaching that with, with the respect that it deserves and with the consideration that it deserves. So it's cool to hear. Um, cause not, not every team would take the time, right. To, uh, to, to get how you talk about those things or how you represent those things in a game. Right. Well, I think, I think that it's just, it's, it's easy. You know, it's it's you can you can say you can dismiss somebody as saying, you know, they're crazy. And and that's all the decision you had to make in order to never look at this person again or never take them seriously because they're crazy. If you took a person that you called crazy and sat them down and talked to them, you might realize that there's a lot more to them mm -hmm. and that maybe crazy was a bit of an umbrella term. And that maybe you're contributing to the problem you know whatever uh, i'm just saying um we took the road less traveled yeah well, so uh we've now entered into virginia's tape uh as you can see we walked through the door we have teleported to a grocery store that we must now platform to uh and I've fallen into the water twice, but nobody has seen that, right? So, <laughs> doesn't seem to kill you. <laughs> um, and Kale in the chat mentions the the shopping cart physics in the game, and mm -hmm. you know another just great comical respite mm -hmm. uh, if you're feeling a little downtrodden from all the all the horror in the game. I mean, it's a, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it makes to some people it's petting the cat, and to other people it's pushing a cart. Man, you know, we don't judge. We just wanna we want we, we want the game to be fun, man. And if you wanna push the carts and put them back in place, you know, have at it, man. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen streams of the game of the demo where there were hundreds of people rooting for you to put the carts back in place. Like, what you know, entertainment <laughs> is the. Uh, you know, it's a spectrum. <laughs> uh, Justin's gaming corner wants to know how did how big did the overall script turn out? Uh, you mean page wise? I don't. I don't even know, man. <laughs> um, the you know, much like any other process, um, writing process or or, or uh, you know, producing anything, be it a game or a, a film, it goes through many iterations. So. The, the final script is, you know, a quarter the size of the amount of paper that was used to write everything, you know, that got us to that point. Like, there have been rewrites upon rewrites upon rewrites. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is as much a part of the process as anything. So, script was pretty big. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, it's like, I'll tell you this. There were iterations of the game where the protagonist spoke a lot more. And at some point, we decided that we don't want to put words in the player's mouth. And we wanted to let the player and hopefully the streamer react as much as possible and we just decided to take take it out um that's all i'll say about that so you know it's 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 fluctuated mm -hmm. yeah so we're now in uh the homo mart uh the the store where virginia story is going to take place and uh in a lot of ways in this uh in this tape it's kind of a labyrinth right like the uh it's a it's a maze there's tight corridors you know um and 
one of the things I, I think is really cool about this game, and I think Kale mentioned this in the chat uh, previous, is how while this may be the feeling of this first tape, it's not necessarily the feeling of the whole game. So how mm -hmm. did you guys approach um, without giving away too many details? Like making each of the tapes feel cohesive while also giving them like a, a distinct flavor or exploring a, a distinct theme. Uh, well, one of the things um, that we focus on is keeping the, um, the gameplay fresh. Uh, so while you're exploring, you know, possibly somebody else's story that takes place in a, in a different place altogether, the mechanics of the game also slightly change and, and you have to adapt. Um, the use of mirrors while common in this level doesn't mean that it doesn't exist in the next it's, it's there. Uh, but the focus is on something else. Um, what you're doing right now, holding up a piece of uh, broken mirror glass to look behind you, is something you're going to be doing the whole game. Um, but but it's but the focus on mirror play is much greater in in you know in in this tape. Um, so different stories, different mechanics different locations, um, different music styles, pretty really a different feeling, a different feeling with the same through line. That's, that's what we're, that's what we're going for. This is, you know, to keep it fresh and to keep your, um, your experience, uh, as, as a player learning the mechanic, uh, every, every time you progress, you, you, uh, you're sort of, you know, you're rewarded with another ability to, to, to broaden your experience with. So I think right now is a good time for us to kind of pause and, and point mm -hmm. out our our mannequins uh, in the game who are of, of just a, a immense help. <laughs> and I realize now I've been being attacked. I'm playing with the sound kind of low so uh, we can hear you as well. But uh, the mannequins here kind of explaining the mirror mechanics. So we've just encountered uh, Virginia. Uh, and the way the mirror shard works is if we are being hunted by Virginia, uh, we can hold up this mirror and find her in it. And if we're looking at her, uh, then she will disappear. So the mannequins are doing a great job of kind of explaining this mechanic to us. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, okay. Yeah, great. So, um, mannequins, another I mean, I wouldn't say overused trope, but I mean, we didn't invent that. Mannequins have been used in horror a lot. And I think that people have a certain expectation of them when they appear. And so much of the thought going into the uh, this uh, In Sound Minds game design is uh, rewarding, but also subverting expectation. Uh Sometimes, you know, fulfilling it and, and you get to go, I knew that was going to happen. That's exactly what I knew was going to happen. And sometimes it is a completely new take on something that, you know, you thought was obvious. You thought that something was out to hurt you and it's uh, maybe it's there to help. I mean, you won't know right away. And that's part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have uh, uh, somebody uh, like uh, Salty Leia Solo in the chat, uh, which I will personally call out and say, I watched her stream, her, they, you, uh, and it was fantastic. And thank you for that. And we enjoyed every moment of it. And uh, every person's experience of this game is meant to be a little different. Yeah, I think somebody else in the chat had mentioned that on their first playthrough of the demo, they didn't find all of the parts to the to the gun uh, before going into Virginia's tape. So they were kind of down a tool going into it. But sure, doesn't mean that they weren't able to com to complete it. Uh, I believe you can complete uh, all of the demo without the gun. Correct? You can. Yeah, sure. So uh, I I will say this about the demo. Um. Things have changed since the demo came out. 
the experience will not be exactly the same. You know? Oh, in this first chapter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so again, without, you know, giving too much away, there's, um, it's, of course, the more tools you have to complete a job, the better. But the mechanics of the first level, even as far as you've gotten so far, some stuff has changed, and a little, you know some some of it's going to be uh, completely new. It's going to be a fresh a fresh start. So mm -hmm. there's 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 a whole bunch of stuff that we haven't revealed yet. Yeah. So uh, I think you know I don't I've said I said it at the top I don't want to give too much away. I want to leave people with something to. Uh, to go play in the demo i think we're probably around halfway through the demo at this point so um i, th I think now's a good time for us to kind of kind of stop uh with the gameplay stuff and i will say exclamation point demo in the chat we'll give you a link to the steam page um and uh you'll be able to uh to play through this entire demo uh which is actually a lot of gameplay i i, I recommended this game to a buddy of mine who's a big horror fan and he was shocked with just the amount of content that was available to play uh for free here so definitely uh go check that out before i let you go yeah i did did want to show off some of the uh the concept art that we have um that players are uh, that, that fans are able to to access through our paranoia mailing list um and Pull that up on stream to, to show off. So let me uh, alt tab out of the game here. So if you type exclamation point paranoia in the chat, it'll give you a link to the uh, to the InSound Mind mailing list. You can click on that link. It will. Oh, sorry. I think the um, the command time is like five seconds cooldown. So you can click that link, sign up. There's a lot of awesome exclusive content that's available there. You know, I think there's been pictures of the team's cats. You want to talk a little bit about your cats real quick? M do you, my cats? Yeah, do you own any cats? Um, I personally, right now, no. I have over the years many, many cats. Uh, but in this iteration of my life in my tiny little Harlem apartment, no cat, unfortunately. Uh, but the rest of the team, yes. And I, I can't speak for theirs except for the pictures that I'm constantly seeing, uh, which are very cute and smushable, all of them. So uh, I'm oh. just scrolling through these pictures right here. Uh, if you're part of our mailing list, these this is some of the concept art we've shared. You know, we've shared pictures of the team's cats. Like oh I, wow! Like I mentioned, uh, there's uh, there were exclusive holiday cards around uh, the holiday season. So a lot of just really cool content. I definitely recommend people going and signing up there. There's also if you sign up, a special message from the developers. We've also showed off uh, a little bit of the content from future chap uh, from the next chapter as well um so a lot of just really cool stuff to to do over there I recommend you sign up if you're watching on youtube there will be a link in the description uh as well so definitely go check that out Yair, uh, I appreciate you giving us some of your time today to talk about uh, to talk about the game. I know I am excited to play the full thing. I haven't had a chance. I've seen some of the the stuff in the later chapters, but haven't had a chance to play it. Uh, very excited about it, though. Um, and yeah, just thank you so much for the insight. Thank you. No, thank you for having me. I'm 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 so excited to uh, to, to 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 release this upon the world. And, and see how it's uh, how it's received. I, I and not not just me. The entire team. We're like we're like school children. We're like giddy. We cannot wait to share this with you. Well. Later this year, 2021, be on the lookout for the full release. In the meantime, go to Steam, try out the demo there. In Sound Mind coming out this year on Steam, uh, PlayStation Five. Xbox Series X and S, and we also just announced it's also coming to Nintendo Switch, which is really exciting if you want to be able to play it uh, on the go. So uh, so be on the lookout for that. If you're having trouble signing up with the email, uh, join our Discord, exclamation point Discord, and let me know what your email address is. I'm a uh, loot community manager in there. Uh, just shoot me a ping and I can I can help you out. Uh, and then if you are looking for those that concept art, it, the 
email it would come from modusgames.com so uh you can search your inbox for that and it'll give you that but yeah lots of cool stuff uh to see there we're gonna let yeah you get be- get on with this day we're gonna let you guys go and until next time take care and uh we'll see you goodbye <laughs>